Ahoy and Dobri Den, as they say in the Czech Republic. Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. I am sitting here in my brand new uh, hometown for the next uh, year, more or less, in the Czech Republic. Uh, and we are doing a recap today of my international travels to the Czech Republic and some of my first impressions here. And I am here with my lovely co-host, the man who's got it going on, my buddy Jared. What's going on? Not much, man. I got it going on. That's what's going on. Oh, that's for sure. Welcome. I'm glad you made it safely. Me too. Uh, it's good to see you. It's, you know, it's, we, we do this remotely, so it's, it, nothing has really changed with, with how far away we are from each other. True. But now, it, but it, I can feel that you're way farther away than me, even though we're, I'm staring at you from the exact same distance right. I always do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. The but only I can thing feel it. Has... I feel it. Right. The only thing that has changed, I think, is the time difference. Which, That's uh, true. For those, right. That's which for, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, where I am currently at, it is a six-hour difference. So yes. keep that in mind. I'm in the Eastern time zone. One of the, I'd say, argue the greatest time zone. <laughs> I think the British might argue it's GMT, but I'm saying uh, Eastern time zone. I think anyway. the, the Czechs <laughs> might also argue with you there. But uh, anyways, what are you uh, going to tell our listeners, Jared? Um, yes, oh, I, I, I was like, I don't know, but I was like, oh, right. Hey guys, follow us on Twitter at untranslatable one. Our Instagram is untranslatable podcast. Chad is still yet to send me any pictures. He's been there for like three days and I haven't seen nary a picture. Everyone. I'll send you some. Uh, that's you why were. you haven't either. <laughs> well, make sure it's all right. Send me two batches. All right. A batch I can good. post and then a batch just for you and I. That'll be our own those are our own personal. Some folder. private picks. Sounds good. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, man, I gotta I gotta make a confession. I've uh I've been avoiding um taking pictures right now because I'm not trying to be that tourist who's right. like just gawking at everything. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Um I I tried just like our podcast, I tried to do three to four months of solid research before coming here. <laughs> and um and I read a lot of things about Prague and pickpockets. And so I was very paranoid that if I made myself look like a tourist, which right. I already did with my, you saw, everyone saw my suitcase, my traveler guitar and my carry on. Yeah. You know, it was very clear that I, I was not, you know, either I was moving back home or I was moving, you know, somewhere or spending a long time somewhere. Email us at the untranslatable podcast at gmail.com. Tell us what you learned about your, when you traveled abroad, what you had to change. When I was when we were in Austria, there were a, one, a couple times where when we were walking back from school, uh, we would walk past the Staatsoper, which is a which is a very popular theater in the center of uh, Vienna, and uh, there were always people standing outside trying to give you deals and stuff like that. And me and my friends, some uh, like like sometimes just joking around. It would be so easy all you had to do to get them to like walk up to you because you look like Chad. Mm -hmm. Are you writing an essay over there? Yes. <laughs> anyway, it would be so easy to uh, be able to uh, like tell what they're um, like, like, like how to look like a tourist. And so mm -hmm. all we would have to do is just like look up slightly at the Staatsoper and then like a bunch of people would run up and be like, sir, can I get you a uh, or hey, do you right. deal on the. Uh, <laughs> and oh, my gosh. Yes. It, it was so easy. You just have to pretend that you're like looking at it interestingly. It's like, oh, wow. And they'd be like, oh, sir, sir, can I? Uh... <laughs> well, well, that was also <clears throat> right in the heart of kind of the touristy area in Vienna. And there was a, right. always those dudes in those goofy Mozart outfits yes. trying to sell you <laughs> the super touristy concerts. Yes. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, in Prague, I did not uh, come across that. But what I did come across a little bit in Prague was, which surprised me, is uh, a few times I, you know, would try to interact with people. And uh, I would ask them in Czech, do you speak English? And most people will tell you if you go to Prague, everyone speaks English, right? Mm -hmm. I asked a lot of people and like my bus driver to get me to my hometown, I asked him if he spoke English and he was like, no. And I was just like, oh, this is, this is awkward. <laughs> and he said something to me in Czech and I just kind of nodded and smiled. And I realized, I figured out based on the context of the situation, he was asking me where I'm going because he was putting my suitcase in a certain spot, right? Gotcha. In the, in the front of, so I took a bus. It was about a two hour bus ride. Very nice. Very comfortable. Um, but anyways, you know, depending on which stop you stop, like a, um, it was like a, uh, like a, uh, com not, not like a, uh, one of those bigger buses with room in the bottom for your suitcase. Yeah. I'm trying to think what you would mm -hmm. call it, but you know, we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, right. Right. Like Greyhound-esque, but way nicer because they 
take buses way more in Europe. Right, ex- exactly. And and it was only $5 from Prague to my $5. Hometown, was, yeah, it was a steal. Anyways. Damn. So, yeah, so I figured out. He was just asking me where I'm going. And then I told him, you know, um, Khomotov, which is where, where I'm living. Mm-hmm. And so so then, then, then he smiled and he put my bag in the right spot. And then he said, like, something, like, really fast and check. And he said, and I think he said something along, I would guess he said something along, along the lines of, oh, you can speak a little Czech. And he laughed. And all the Czech people around me were laughing. And I was just kind of like, ha, 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 like, oh, That okay. seems very, I'd be very uncomfortable. I'd be like, oh, everyone's laughing at me. This is how, this is how I die, I believe. Right. <laughs> right. And I'll have, a, I'll have a Czech untranslatable for you later that's kind of related to this, but I don't want to jump the gun just yet. But all right. Uh, yeah, but it was it's I got to tell you though man, I've I've loved my first couple of days here. Sorry to get right into the topic, I guess, but, but we got I mean, a lot to is, talk this about. This is all so. we're talking about. Right. This is it's just been super exciting. Um and I mean in a way, you know, not to be cliché, but uh, in a lot of ways very life-changing already. Um just because I've you know, you and I both have been in places where we could speak the language or, or slightly understand it, right? Germany, Austria. I feel like you can understand bits and pieces of French, so you're not completely right. lost. Right, right, Whereas right. right now, the level of my check is basic phrases, which I'm actually going to quiz you later later this episode on some basic phrases. Um, I feel so like when I you come, be quizzing you. I, I mean, well you, well, well, you already quizzed me enough as it is on stuff and you usually stump me. So I think it's time time to, as Michael Scott says, it's time to um, how the turntables um, from the office. But yeah, so, but one thing I've noticed though is, is we've been spoiled, Jared, being able to be in a country where you understand the other language. Oh yeah. Um, we've been very spoiled because I got here and I had, I had a moment today. I went to the grocery store to buy a couple things. And, you know, I greeted the woman and, and, and in Czech, and, and I'm sure she heard my accent. She had to have because my Czech is by no means even good at this right, point, I would right. say. And uh, and, and then, that's all and, you could say also. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I have, like, maybe, like, five or ten words or phrases. Yeah, like, I have, like – but anyways, so, so she was asking me all these questions in Czech, and I just kind of gave her a blank stare, and then I just told her in Czech, I, I don't speak Czech, and she was like, oh – Okay, and but but then she didn't like try to like explain to me in English. It was just like, all right, well, I guess you know, I'm I'm <laughs> Sucks assuming to be she, you because we're in the Czech right, Republic, <laughs> right? Exactly. But but you know, I think if you are in a foreign country, you should learn some some of the foreign language, um, which right. I'm, especially I'm, you because you're gonna right. be there for an extended period of time. You'd exactly. almost be stubborn not to learn. Like it almost be hard right. not to at that point. Which which I find interesting because I spoke with some of the teachers who who came here last year to teach English in the Czech Republic, and I talked to one of them, and he actually said that yeah, I, I was going to learn it, and then I decided I didn't really need it because most of the people he was around spoke English. But I just don't want to have that mentality while I'm here because one of the reasons why I'm here is to really learn and immerse myself in Czech language and Czech culture. And I'm not going to pick up as much culture if I don't learn the language because both are very interrelated and very important. Right. Yeah. And I mean, we're on missions to become polyglots. And yes, I think sir. the way you do that is by I mean, the way you're going to prove your German by by getting better at uh, the Czech, I believe, and probably your English, too. I, I think it all mm-hmm. kind of works together. And oh, yeah. so so let me ask you this. So that guy chose not to learn the language. So mm-hmm. you have to. So there's does your program offer ways for you to learn it or you do have to you have to actively find that on your own um that's a good question i mean well because he's saying he chose not to so it's clearly not i mean no one's requiring him to he's he's a job right but um he i mean i mean it seems almost hard to like like why are you avoiding it i would is is what i'm getting at like like if they offer it are you avoiding it or do you have to do you have to go the extra mile well, let me tell you this. I can tell you we are expected to speak English with all of our students and all of our teachers of course, at the you're school. An English teacher. Right, which I totally understand and I respect that. Um, right. And I think based on that, um, you don't really, you might need to learn some basic check for survival, but that's about it. Right. And, you and hang honestly, out with your colleagues or whatever. And... Right, right. And I could honestly, Jared, um, I might be jumping the gun way too much here, but I could actually see myself. Um, maybe at one day trying to come back here and teach English here again because it so far I've been very impressed with with the country. Um, what's what I found very interesting is, as I mentioned, um, 
you know, doing research about the Czech Republic before I came here, I think it's a safe statement to say you and I are both kind of nerds. And uh, whether that How be language you? nerds or, or car nerds or music nerds or whatever. <laughs> All right, but, that's fair. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> right. But anyway, so I, um, you know, I asked um, if I could find a, um, like a Czech speaking buddy while I was here. And, uh, and I, I was told by um, a few people here, and I also did a little research, and they said, well, what might happen is you might speak English with this person for a while, and then they'll be like, okay, I, I got to go, and I'm busy, and then me not be able to get, get to practice my check, so I have to be kind of persistent. And the other thing I read, which so far I can tell you my experience has been the opposite. If you look online for like what Czech people are like, for some reason, many people say they're kind of distanced and reserved and cold <laughs> and honestly man the the f- couple of czech people i've met so far have been so welcoming and so nice and so friendly um that i i think that maybe if you go to prague which is a big city maybe the people are a little bit more distant because it's big city living if you go to right. new york it's like that too i'm sure it's kind of like right. that in la any big city you go to you know people are the tourists the, are kind of annoying <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So you you don't really you try to not interact with tourists because they're annoying. That makes sense. Right, right. and not, not only that, but I think the the it's it's just a different pace of life. And and the the town I'm the town or city I'm living in, you know, there's five hundred thousand people, so it's a decent size. But they're also how many people? Five hundred thousand. Okay, that's yeah, that's a that's so a it's city. good good yeah, so it's good size city. Um, but it doesn't strike me as a city that's like Prague, where people are like more or less almost always on the go. Um, and I gotta tell you, man, obviously my fr- one of my first interactions with a Czech person was my my cab driver from the airport to my hotel in Prague. Mm-hmm. And 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 shout out to Tomas was his name, super nice guy, was cracking jokes the whole yeah, taxi dudes. ride. <laughs> that's a different Tomas, but uh, <laughs> but I, you know I was asking him about about some tips and things, and and you know he he suggested a few restaurants near where my hotel was and and you know he was asking me about you know oh I he asked me where I was from and I, I said Michigan and he said oh um you have lakes right and I was like wow wow respect he I was very impressed he knew Dude, I was getting uh-huh. a ride home in an Uber in Philadelphia or a Lyft in Philadelphia a couple months uh-huh. ago and the dude didn't know where Michigan was and he was American <laughs> I, I, so, you know what though that, that sadly does that sadly doesn't surprise me that sadly like i thought he was joking me. at first and i was like what he's like what is that that's in ohio right i was like no oh, that's its own oh, no that's its own thing dude th- them be fighting words right there. <laughs> yeah i was like pull the car over please right can did you rate him zero stars because you should have uh, I probably gave him five just because uh You're a one nice i have a five star, and i have a five star rating already Okay. I'm I oh I consistently get ten to twenty percent off all my rides. Oh, nice. Because I I, I and apparently according to the emails it's because I have a five star rating. It's been months and months since I've had a non at least ten percent off a ride. Oh, nice. Good work. That's yeah. a good tip. Anyway, back to the Czech Republic. <laughs> we'll brag about my Lyft rating later. <laughs> right. Sounds, sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, so um, uh, it's it's just been a great experience. But I gotta tell you, man. I mean, we've touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, but it's just been very humbling for me to not know what the heck is going on around me when people are talking, right? Yes. Like the, like when I was on the bus heading to my hometown, um, the, the, the woman in the bus who like hands out magazines and headphones and drinks and stuff. Um, Damn, you know, what is she, this? Emirates? I, I know, <laughs> dude. <it's> classy. <laughs> I'm a classy man, Jared. I don't, I don't travel in, in these crappy buses. Sir. Right. But she was asking me all the questions in Czech, and and I already had headphones in because I was listening to music, so she didn't ask me for headphones. Right. But she asked me if I wanted anything to drink, and I uh, I had just had like a huge like this liter was five. Of water. Year, uh, wait, what's their currency? Uh, Czech crowns, the Czech corona. And, and this was five dollars. Well, five euros. Excuse so me, maybe five euro. But maybe six or seven dollars. That's crazy still. that you're eating drinks yeah. and stuff. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Continue. I'm and, blown and, away just by the accoutrement right? you get for five euro. Right. Right? Can you? Can do they you take your own? Uh, well, some places do, but I think you you get gypped a little bit just of because. Course. Of right. course. Um, which which makes sense. I mean, you should use their currency if you're here. Um, right. I, but I was but just can, wondering why you said euros. Because on, online, when you so the the website oh. is in Czech, in English, or in German, and so you can and pay whatever cur- you want. 
Yeah, so if you if you click on the Czech language, it comes out in crowns. Right. If you click on the English language, it comes out in euros. And German, it comes out in euros as well. Okay. So that's why, yeah, it was like five euros. Um, okay. Sorry, but, I didn't mean to yeah. interrupt. I'm just blown away oh, by all good. these uh, features on this cheap you're good. bus trip. I, I, have a, I have a little request for you, though, buddy. Can you tell our listeners out there what uh, accoutrement means? Accoutrement? Huh. Is French for, like, I don't know, extras? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Is, is it extras? How do you... Wait, accout... Uh, I have no coutre, idea how to spell it. You know more French than I do. Oh, here it is. Additional items or of dress mm-hmm. or equipment. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah. Because so you it's, used it's, it. It's, it's usually apparently a, a, like a, a clothes-related thing. It seems okay. like that's what it's based off of. So extra like scarves or uh, right. or purses or I still, all I my still rings feel, that I wear. You know, right. Accoutrement. But I feel like you still used it in the right way, and it was just so smooth yeah. and such a such oh. a good little little untranslatable. I figured Thank we you. could we could pop that in there too for our listeners. That's right. You, <laughs> time before it's already time. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so that was. But she was asking me all these questions on the bus in Czech, and I had no idea. And I was, you know me, I'm I'm a worry wart sometimes, and so I was like, which stop is going to be my stop? Because I noticed when we pulled up to the first stop. I didn't see any signs of the place. And thankfully, the woman sitting next to me, she said, Looney. And I'm like, I'm like what? And she's like, Looney. And I was like, oh, that must be the town. And then so I asked her, I said, because the bus was going to start in Prague, went to Looney, then uh, um, Khomotov, where I'm living, and then it ends in uh, Yirkov. And so I asked her then in my very, br- well, it wasn't even really a full sentence, but I was like, Looney, Khomotov, Yirkov. And she was like, <laughs> ah, no, which means yes. Okay. And that's also a little confusing for English speakers. The fact that they say "ah no" is yes, "ne" is no, which I think for us right. we would understand being German yep. speakers. But "ah no" is um, you'd think they'd be like "ah uh, no," <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but see, that's also the thing about go- being in a new country mm-hmm. is um, like you don't even have to know the language to show that you're at least trying to to uh, like. Spe- like like there, like even you who doesn't know the language, the mm-hmm. simple things like that is so much goes so much further than being like, does this go to Humultov next? Right. <laughs> right. It's Very like true. finding ways to communicate like a like a normal person. Mm-hmm. I that that's that's I think one it's um like that sh- that shows that in itself shows that you're trying more than the average tourist or whatever. Not that you're a tourist. Right. I mean, according to the official well, survey was, we did, <laughs> yes, you are a tourist. I was going to say. But you're not, you're not there as a tourist. Let's put it that right. way. Even though you live your life like a dirty tourist. <laughs> right. I and mean, then I, also, I, that's yeah. kind of part of the fun to me uh, of learning, of, of being in those situations. Oh, absolutely. Keeps you on your toes a little bit. Absolutely. I, I, I like that. I, 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 it just keeps you a little bit more aware of everything because mm-hmm. you, you have to. You don't know. And <laughs> you can't just run on autopilot. I, I right. like that feeling. Yeah, me too. And it's and it's been really nice to kind of have to challenge myself because, you know, I for, I forgot how easy I had it being in Germany and Austria where I know what people are saying around me. I if I'm lost, I can ask for help. Here right. here the, the really the only phrase I've been pulling out is a uh, anglitsky, um, which means do you speak English? And and it's so far it's been about 50-50. Um, okay. Some have said yes and some have had said no. Um, and I'll tell you a story a little bit later, um, kind of related okay. to that, but, uh, we'll get to that later. All right. But, uh, you got any, any other questions or any, anything for me, Jared, um, before we get into our untranslatables? I'll, I'll save them for, for, let's get to some untranslatables first. I got some okay. questions, but I'll save them. No, I'll, I'll ask you, I, I, have okay. actually, I actually have a question. Something okay. I, I, you know, I was, I was doing some research on your behalf. Thank about you. about like um, what do you do when you when you first get to a new city abroad? Mm-hmm. And one thing they uh, they said a bunch of different places said was uh, to keep a journal. Mm. And I I was I wrote down to ask you, are you going to keep a journal? But then as I was writing that down, I I, I thought I'm I'm writing this down for our podcast. There's mm-hmm. no better journal than what we're doing right now. If that anyone wants true. to ask you, if anyone wants to ask you, if anyone's asking like, hey, how is the uh, Czech Republic going? You're like, clearly you do not listen to my podcast. Right. <laughs> I'm offended. Go back and listen to the Untranslatable podcast. Someone text you that, you just send 18. them a link. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to have to do that. I might even, that's a great idea. That's actually. hilarious. Oh my that God. That's really funny. That's too good. <laughs> well, I, I would agree with you. Um, 
and actually my uncle um, years ago told me I should actually just in general just keep a daily journal. He said it'll improve my skills as a writer. It'll make I me do that. Do you really? Like seriously? Yeah, I've been getting a little lazy for over the past couple of weeks, but I have I started in at the beginning of 2015. I now have six composition notebooks filled back from oh, wow. back. Yeah, that's really I, I write, cool. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah. I'm I would I wouldn't want man. anyone to read it cuz it might look like the ramblings of a psycho human being. I mean, but, you uh, are a psycho human being, so that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. It started when I was kind of depressed like uh like okay. at, like at the I did job I hated when I was in, in mm-hmm. Michigan. And uh, it, it was it was just a great way to uh, like blow off steam, and then I was like, I'm gonna, okay. and I just kept it going. Although That's over the idea. past couple of weeks, I've been getting a little lazy, and I honestly think it, I, it's because of the podcast. Oh, real interesting. Okay. Yeah, but um, just different. Yeah, different channeling your energy through a different right. medium. Yeah. Right. I mean, for me, for me, if I'm ever. If I ever need to blow off steam, usually I'll I'll just pick up a guitar and play for a while. Um, I gotta tell you, man. I do that sometimes too. I, with, piano. with your piano, yeah. Yeah. I I I played a lot of guitar before I moved because I was just really anxious about everything. I was anxious, you know, and you know, you know, like I like I said like five minutes ago while we were talking about this. I I worry a lot, um, and so you know I was worried. Am I gonna get there? Okay, is my is my stuff gonna be all right? Um, but I you, think, your back came out fine. I, you didn't mention it, so I assumed there was oh, yep, no problem yep, with back. No claim. problems. Although, of course, this, there wasn't any problems. By the well, way. well, there kind of was. I don't know if I told you this, um, but when I, so I, got, I get to the airport, right? And my mom was nice enough to go up there with me just to kind of help me haul my bags and like and just kind of, I think, be there for like moral support. We go to up the there. Czech Republic. Yeah, it just we went when we went to the airport in Detroit. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. I thought you meant yeah, she yeah. went to the Czech Republic. Yes. She flew over with me. <laughs> just for back. some moral support. All right. right. Bye bye. <laughs> Took a yeah, got a sh- some champagnes on the bus to uh, Homotov. I need right. to figure out how to say and spell that. You're 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 doing it pretty close. That's not bad. For I tried to with... I tried to Google it and I couldn't type it out. I'll I'll, I'll send you stuff later. All but right. uh, well, with someone with no experience, I said it okay. Yeah, you said it pretty well. Um, but anyways, so so we get to the we get to the the line right, and then because I had already printed off my boarding pass, there's a, a little travel tip for all our listeners: print out your boarding pass beforehand or put it on your phone. Yeah, it'll save you a lot of time in the lines if you didn't Dude, already know. Dude, I that. haven't checked in at a at a kiosk or or debt or table in years. Well, I did have to do it in Tanzania, but I think that was more because of a lack of technology. Right. But um, like other that than that. Sense. I haven't because yeah they don't have like the little things you put your phone on, right? But um, the little scanner readers or whatever, right? It was a pretty small mm-hmm. airport too. But anyway, I yeah, I haven't checked in at a desk or kiosk uh, in, in years. I, I it's just all checking in on your computer or phone, right? And so anyway, so we're up there, you know, and I gotta you know check my bags, and um, what ended up happening was, um, of course, I don't know how this happened, dude. My suitcase was underweight. It was two kilos under, or like a kilo, or, or one kilo under, so like two point two pounds under, right? And fifty pounds is the limit. But my carry-on, because I had my audio interface, two microphones, I also brought clothes, like like uh, three t-shirts, a couple of pairs of socks, a couple of pairs of underwear, just in case if my luggage were to get lost, I wouldn't have to. It's summer and it's hot here. This has been mm-hmm. one of the hottest summers in the history of the Czech Republic actually. Um, and so I was like, I do not want to sweat in these clothes and have to wear them for three or four days if something were to happen. So the irony is, so my carry on, I have never had to weigh a carry on before in my life. And the guy saw my carry on and it's a bigger bag. Right. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I'm going to need you to weigh your carry on. I was just like, Oh no. I was like, great. <laughs> and I knew it was going to be over cause they give you 18 pounds for your carry on. My carry on was about 22 pounds. So, what I ended up having to do was I had to move all my clothes from my carry-on into my suitcase. And the guy was trying to say, well, it'll be $90 if you just check your carry-on. And I'm like, look, man, I have my laptop in here. I have my recording equipment in here. Right. I, I have like headphones, like nice like Beats headphones in here that I don't want to get smashed. And There's I've no... seen how people handle suitcases. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome, it's, that it's, thing. Right, right. <laughs> and I mean, sadly, they kind of have to. I mean, yeah, think about yeah, how many course. suitcases they move in a day. But but so I was just like, there's 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 no way I'm going to check my carry-on bag in for luggage. And we said, okay, well, how much will it be if we move some stuff so my carry-on will be underweight and my suitcase will be over? And he said, well, that will be 130 bucks. 
Damn. Yeah. So, you know, what's crazy though, dude, I was talking to my, my parents about this when I traveled to Germany the first time in 2006. So granted it was 12 years ago. Um, we were allowed two suitcases, a carry on a personal item and both suitcases <laughs> could be 70 pounds. Now they're 50 pounds. Yeah. So, so had I have gone to the Czech Republic in 2006, I could have brought an entire wardrobe and not paid a dime. I know. Um, you could have brought an entire recording studio with you. Right? Speakers, <laughs> everything, for sure. For sure. But anyways, so so my I had to... soundproof booth. Right. I could have soundproofed my, my room and my, and my flat. <laughs> I like to but... travel with my own soundproofing foam. <laughs> exactly. So, so anyways, so I had to move my clothes into my suitcase and put my suitcase over. So we had to pay $130. Bucks. Um, but... It was also nice because my carry-on wasn't nearly as heavy, um, so that was a big plus. And you know, I had to haul that carry around the carry-on around all over, and um, so so then uh, you know it all worked out okay. And thankfully, um, knock on wood, my luggage wasn't lost or damaged or anything. Um, and I gotta say, my mentor here, when she saw my suitcase, my carry-on, and my traveler guitar, she said, "Wow, I'm really impressed. You were able to fit ten months worth of stuff in there." And I, and I explained to her that I could have packed way lighter and bought stuff over here, but I already have the clothes. I have clothes that I teach in and I've used to teach in before. So it's like, why just buy a bunch of stuff and spend more money when I could save that money and use it to travel? You know, I was shocked when you sent me a picture of, uh, like when I posted that picture of, of your, of your luggage, I was expecting that duffel bag to be much bigger. That was I mean, like a medium size. That was not even the biggest the duffel bag could be. Like I was expecting. Mm, I think it's pretty big. Maybe the picture didn't do it justice. Maybe. I mean, well, here, hold up. I mean, it's. I got it right here. Hold up. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. Chad is going to get his duffel bag. I mean. So now you'll at least be able to compare it with my body. Oh, okay. No, it, that's it's pretty big. big. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's yeah, not no. A little bag, but, but the nice thing about it. The is picture just didn't do it justice. Sorry. You know, you're t- I was ahead. talking and I was like, Chad's talking over me, but he doesn't have his headphones on, so he has no idea. <laughs> right. right. So that's my bad. But yeah. But I mean, the nice thing is, like, like you said in, in our episode where we were talking about my packing list, um, you know, the duffel bag is way lighter than if I had a suitcase that size. Right. Right. So I was able to pack more in it for sure. And what I was saying when you couldn't hear me a second ago was that mm-hmm. – uh, that was the picture. Didn't I? Don't think did it, did it properly Mm-mm. just Mm-mm. proper justice because the backpack might have hit it a little bit. And the backpack is also I, pretty big. That's too. the thing is I think I'm also thrown off by how big the backpack is because I remember seeing a picture of it and being like, oh, that's not that big. Then seeing like a picture of it packed and being like, oh, that's huge. Right. And then the picture when I saw there, it looked like sm- smaller. But I, yeah, I think it was just all the proportions because the backpack's a little bigger. And it was probably the angle. I was, you know, it was shot from kind of a yeah. down angle, which makes well, everything Well, that's why you're a photo- uh, podcaster, not a photographer. That's why I let you do the <laughs> posting on, on Instagram. Because everything uh, would just look tiny on our Instagram. And that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of nice, though, to hear from my mentor. She was like, yeah, I'm very impressed. You know, that's, that's what you brought for 10 months. And also... Um, Thank God I have an elevator in my apartment because I'm on the ninth floor, so I'm way up. Yeah. It's a beautiful view. I'll send you a pic because I actually I was hoping to send you a pic during sundown because it's gorgeous with a so they're called the Ore Mountains here and they're absolutely gorgeous and there's some houses on the top of the mountain. It's really pretty. But of course today when I wanted to actually take pictures of it, it was super cloudy. So Okay. There's there's a specific time that I can't think of what it's called right now, but there's a specific word for that time. Where it's the perfect time to take a picture where the sun's going down. Right. There's a word for that, but I can't think of it. Well, well I'm not sure either. We'll have to add uh, that. <laughs> email us at the untranslatable podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Tell us what that word is because I'm not going to look it up. Right. Me either. <clears throat> anyway, let's get to these untranslatables. Let's do it. Uh, I'll start you off with the Cantonese one. This oh, one, cool. I will start by saying it's a little offensive. <laughs> okay. I like, th- I like that. Okay. Um, it's Pa, f- pa Fung. And the literal tr- uh, translation for pa fung is steakhouse. Okay. And so is, I, is it like a sausage party? No, but you're kind of close. Kind of okay. the opposite, though. Is it like a brothel? Not no, not that. Is that the opposite of a sausage party? What well, well, prostitution? <laughs> I, I, I I don't know. So so is it like a party with a bunch of girls? I don't know. You tell me. 
uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of wanted to keep that going. See if we could keep digging that hole. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> hey, uh, the, so the meaning is derived from the Cantonese word for pork chops, which okay. means unattractive women. <laughs> so a steakhouse is a place full of unattractive women. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Check out that steakhouse over there. Let's go to the bar, the other bar. Or check out that steakhouse. Uh, I'll race you there. Are, are you? Are, 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 <laughs> I guess. I don't know many people that would be into that, but uh, I mean, I want... it's a pretty. I think it's. I think you'd be surprised. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> so I, anyway, so oh, yeah, give me one. So as so as as uh, our listeners should know by now, uh, I'm living in the Czech Republic, and uh, I decided this episode. I would only focus on Czech untranslatables. So I got um, four for you today, uh, Jared. The first one, um, I'm probably just going to have to tell you what it means because, the, like, there's no – well, this word has two meanings. So so the word is rachkovat. Rachkovat. Rachkovat, which can mean, like, burr, like if you're cold, Right. Rachkovat or so wait, so that's what you would say for burr? Like if we're like burr, they'd say Rachkovat. I, 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 I guess. I mean if you if you if you go on to Google Translate, or I wonder if it's like a burr like a like a like that that like if you go walk through a field and you get like burrs on I, you. I I think that maybe would be more it's likely. That. Maybe it's that. But I is mean, it how do you spell it? Because burr if it's cold is B R R. That's B R R. If you if you look on Google Translate, it's B U R R. B U R R. Oh, B U R R. So that is. That's probably the burr, like from the uh, little things that stick to your socks. Right, right. I that's hate hilarious. those things too. This is my. Yeah. This has turned into my favorite episode just because of that mistake you just made. That's hilarious. <laughs> I just imagine now. Well, well, wait, like wait, hold up, hold up. Winter and everyone's walking down the street. Hold up. Going, I'm, I'm, that, I, well, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I'm I'm looking it up and I looked it up, and here it says it says burr, as in it's the verb. Well, no. What is burr as a verb? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, to to burr something? What what does that even mean in English? But I will tell you, Jared, what this word also means in Czech. Um, hold up, I'm I'm now curious to define burr. To speak with a burr, to speak roughly, indistinctly, or make a whirring sound. Yep. To make yep. a whir- whirring sound. Yep. So that's huh. so that's the burr. So we learned a new English word today. How about that? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, rachkovato it can mean burr, like to make a whirring sound, but it also means to pronounce one's R's in Czech incorrectly. So I picked this one as my first untranslatable because ah. I guarantee you I'm pronouncing some of my R's incorrectly. Wait, so the, the, if you like pronounced an R incorrectly, they just say rachkovat? Maybe I maybe or I, is I don't that know. a or is that a Rachkovat? See, I'm it's, probably Rachkovating the Rachkovat word. I mean, I mean, you are because it's a r with your tongue, right. not with your throat. Um, I but, can't do that. But uh-huh. in in Czech, in Czech, they actually have two. From my understanding, now granted, I'm still a, a, still a novice at Czech. So so to the audience out there, don't uh, don't take it too uh, hard on me. But uh, um, there's two R sounds in Czech. So you have the r like the rolled R. And then oh. you have an R with a symbol above it that's more like a Z sound. I couldn't handle that that rolled R. That mm-hmm. would that would be the death of me. Well, and I think also depending on the the vowels following the R, it might sometimes be more Ooh. of a R and sometimes maybe more of a R, like a shorter one, a quick one. I I, lis- um, I have listened to a couple Czech songs, and okay. you could definitely they go hard on those on those rolled R's in some of those songs. Right. It's kind of cool. It has a it, it gives a language a distinct sound. I right. mean, even Spanish too does that with the R's. Yeah, and, right, right. But are they that are there's that are is in Spanish is it that pronounced? Yeah. Okay. Like the word dog is perro. Sorry, perro. Okay. Oh yeah, that would so, fuck me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can't yeah. So rachkovat is to pronounce one's R's incorrectly. And what's interesting is that um, other type of R, the kind of j sound, which I'm sure I'm not saying it right. Um, I'm already doing a Rachkovat <laughs> while I'm trying to explain this to you. Um, apparently, some Czech people also have difficulty saying it. So, um, okay. you know, if native speakers are having some trouble with it, <laughs> it's a it's a tough one. Make it easier. Why does your language have to be so hard? Yeah, I, I, that's a great question, Jared. And hopefully, right. I'll have an answer for you at some point. I got yeah, one give for me you. your next one. This one is Georgian from Georgia. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, they also use another uh, alphabet. Speaking of alphabets, we talked about on a recent episode. Mm -hmm. They use an alphabet that I have never seen before. Like okay. these, none of these letters look anywhere even remotely related to anything I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and the phrase is, and it's almost kind of, it, it looks uh oh creepy almost. It's just because I've never seen it. Like I'm staring at it right now and I was like, mm -hmm. this almost looks like an alien just snuck into my room and typed that on my computer. Right. Uh, the phrase, which obviously can most likely be pronounced wrong because I'm reading a phonetic read a version of, or like right. a uh, uh, Roman in, in, right. translation, is Enis Mitana. And that translates to, literally, to bring a tongue to someone. Hmm. Bring a to tongue to someone. Bring a tongue to someone. Interesting. I don't have the slightest idea what that could This mean. is kind of confusing. Even the answer. Okay. okay, so... To bring a tongue to someone is the literal uh, translation. And the meaning is, it is used in a situation where the owner of the tongue is a snitch. Mm. So, you're, so you're bringing your tongue to someone means you're snitching on someone. I ah. think that's what it means. You know what they say, man. Snitches get stitches. Snitches end up in ditches. That is what they Ooh, say. Ooh, I've never heard that one, but it makes sense. <clears throat> All right. Well, I got, I got, like I said, I got a couple more check ones for you. Yes. So this one is a really good one. I really like this one. It is toye, uh, toye yine cafe. You should know what that last word means. Coffee. Uh huh. So to, Pour toye, me a cup of coffee. toye yine uh, cafe, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing this. I'm slightly thirsty wrong. for coffee. Um, nope. Um, I've it, oh, all right. It, it, it literally means, um, uh, it's a different coffee, or it's a different kind of coffee. Okay. What do you think that could mean, Jared? Um, it's not your taste, or, or it's like like it's the same thing, but it's different. I I, I don't. That's you know that's not that's not a far off guess. We would say in English it's apples and oranges. Okay, so it is kind of far off. <laughs> Because what I'm saying is they're like similar things, but they have differences. But what you're, what apples and oranges means is like they're two. They're two different things, right? I guess you are right. Yeah. So yeah, toye yine cafe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Two different coffees. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because coffee, like, like, uh, how different are these coffees? Well, I mean, it, it, well, look at look at your espresso. You have like a latte. You have. Like just a black coffee, you have a melange oh, yeah, or a, a milk coffee. There's all sorts of different kinds. You have a mocha, <laughs> a melange. I haven't heard of one of those in a while. That's because well, those you know those are my jam, my jam. The, yeah, I forgot what it was until you just said it. <laughs> what explain? What is a melange? Explain to the people. Well, melange is French for mixture, um, and it is just basically coffee with uh, with milk. But I think the milk is isn't it like frothed or something. Yeah, um, I, believe, I believe at least it looks like it is. It's it's been a while, sadly, since I've had a melange. Um, but isn't it an uh, is is there like would they, we had it in Austria or they yeah, there like it's a it's Europe, a they're I mean they're places? they're most famous in Vienna. Yeah. Okay. By far. Are mm -hmm. you sure? Are you sure? Because I feel like the French people would. Well, well, disagree. so. Well, well, no, Jared. I think the Viennese the the, 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 Vien <laughs> the Viennese <laughs> named oh. it a melange. You know what? I pulled. I typed in melange coffee, and the first mm -hmm. Wikipedia thing was Vina melange. The, see, there you go. Oh, yeah. So never mind. The proof is in the melange. Get Jared. out of your French people. Right. It's well, see, that's nice that's word. on a on a completely unrelated note to our topic. Um, that's the cool thing about the Viennese dialect is there's influences from French, from Yiddish, from um, Slovakian. Also, probably there might even be some Czech. In there too. I'll have to look. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, yes. Um, toye yine cafe. Um, uh, it's different a different kind, kind of coffee. coffee. Yes. So, what is your next one, buddy? I got a Lithuanian one. Oh, interesting. Cape uh, uh, Schweeney Pent Cape Schweeney Pentkata. Jeez. Pentkata. Okay. Cape Schweeney Sunu. Okay. Kip Shunuiu, no, no, Kip Shunuiui Pengta Koja. Woo! <laughs> One more time, Jared, for the people. <laughs> oh, you bastard. Kip Suniu Pengta Koja. 
What to all of mean? our Lithia- Lithuanian listeners, I am so sorry. Please <laughs> keep listening. I'm a nice person, I promise. <laughs> yes, you are. What, uh, what do those words mean? Uh, like a fifth leg for a dog. Fifth leg for a dog. Hmm. So is it like something unnecessary? Chad? Ooh. Good yes, job. Sir. Good Thank job. You. Lithuanians use this idiom to describe pointless actions or purchases. Also, whenever you end up in a situation where your presence is awkward or unnecessary, you can say that you feel like the fi- like the fifth leg of a dog. Mm, okay. Nice. Um, interesting. Can you say it one more time for the people? You're going to kill me. (laughs) (laughs) No, I cannot. (laughs) I'm sorry, people. No, people are like, no, thank you. No, please stop. Please stop. Just move on. (laughs) Right, right. All right. Well, anyways, let me let me give you my next one Um, here. Let me give it one quick listen. Okay, so like I said, also check. And this is um, Padai uh, Trakaje. And Padai is raining. And uh, trakaje is, and that has Man, that no. weird R sound. Um, trakaje really it, uh, is um, wheelbarrow. So raining wheelbarrow. Does that mean like it's raining cats and dogs or something? You better hit that ham horn, my friend. That's right. So when they say it's raining wheelbarrow, does that mean mm-hmm. that, are they implying that it's raining so hard that it's like wheelbarrows dropping from the sky? Or are they saying it's like someone's dumping a wheelbarrow on, of water on your head? I feel like it could probably be both of those. Or so much rain that it could fill up a wheelbarrow. And fun That's fact. That's not that much rain, by the way. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I mean. I mean, fair enough. Well, if you had multiple <laughs> wheelbarrows, that's a lot of rain. But anyways. You, you know, have we, a backyard filled with wheel, wheelbarrows. Right. But we also have a, we have a similar idiom actually in English. Besides this raining cats and dogs, have you ever heard the idiom, it's raining buckets? Uh, actually, no. I don't think oh, I have. Oh, interesting. Okay. But yeah, that's another idiom. And I think that's that might be a little closer to um, padai and trakaje, um, which is, yes, it's raining wheelbarrows. Right, right, right. And actually, I am um, I decided to do this one because I was talking about idioms today with my mentor. And uh, and uh, and she she told me, you guys say it's raining cats and dogs, but we say. Um, it's raining uh, wheelbarrow, which I think was really interesting. Um, it's raining just like that, not plural. It's not. It's raining wheelbar- wheelbarrow. Well, it's probably is plural. Um, By the way, my, wheelbarrow is a hard word to say. It is. Yes, it is. Uh, all right. I guess it's my turn. Go for it. L- let me write something down real quick. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, here while you're writing it down, let me give you my last check one today. All right, so, no, let me go because I want, okay, you, I want you to. I, I'm done. I just uh, okay. Go for I it. Want, I want. I want. I want to end on a check one. I have another um, Lithuanian one, mm-hmm. and it's bala nemate. You know, and there's an accent over the, t- the e that's just mm-hmm. like a period. It almost looks like so. I don't really know how, what they do with that thing. Okay. What does, I don't know what why do I, I, I. You know, I don't know why I put myself through such like <laughs> uh, torture, but also like I can't just keep giving you like. German or Spanish or right. Italian or French. It's like, I got to switch it up. I'm trying to find like a, sometimes I just go through the list of national languages. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> idea. I got a random one. Anyway, uh, so Bala Nemate or Nemati or Nemet means the swamp didn't see. S-E-E. So swamp didn't visually see. Right. Gotcha. The swamp didn't see. I, I, I have no idea. I don't even know where to begin with this one. In Lithuania, when someone is having a huge dilemma trying to make a decision, they tend to say "bala nemate, nemati, nemat," and just go all in. <laughs> of course, it sounds ridiculous in English, right? But all the best, and they try to be funny. But anyway, yeah. So it essentially just says, uh, "The swamp didn't see" means you just, you just like you're nervous, but you just say, "F it," or "many fregista," and just go all out. <laughs> just right. say, "Okay." Many fragista, uh, bella nemate, and just go all in. Okay, interesting. All just right, like so he, Chad did when he moved to the Czech Republic. That's right, that's right. All or nothing, baby. All right. Well, I got, <laughs> I got, I got my last, uh, my last Czech untranslatable for you this episode. But stay tuned to our listeners out there because I'm sure there will be plenty more to come. Um, it will help you all become polyglots, hopefully. Um, 
So here we yes. go. My last one is um, Le Toast. See, it kind of sounds like what you'd say when you say cheers. That's Nastravi. Nastravi. Mm-hmm. Nastravi. Oh, that's a good one. It is, <laughs> isn't it? And I found out from my mentor, it actually means like to your health. So it's similar to like what they say in Spanish with salud. Nastravi, uh, to your mm-hmm. health. Now let's take these shots. Right? <laughs> hey, hey, a shot a shot a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> But uh, uh, so litos, sadly, because this is one word, there's not really, I can't, you know, I need to right. start giving you idioms in Czech. But anyways, do you, do you have any, any offhand guesses? You just want to take um, a stab at it? I'd say it means uh, train station, refrigerator. <laughs> not, not quite. Um, so so uh, litos is um, a uh, a state of feeling miserable and humiliated. So this is how I felt a little bit when I ask the oh. people here, "Mluvete anglitsky?" Do you speak English? And they say no. Yeah. And then I don't know. But but right here it says, um, "Litost" is the state of torment created by sudden sight of one's own misery. Oh, um, that seems deeper than just a little bit of embarrassment. Right. <laughs> and and here it also says. So this was also kind of from the Book of Laughter and Forgetting by uh, Milan Kundera, who I'm pretty sure is a Czech, very famous Czech uh, writer. And Litos connects also insult to revenge with the desire to strike back at the perceived source of one's shame. Wow. Yeah, pretty deep. It's isn't a powerful it? word. It is. I like it. It is. Yeah, me too. I. You know, man, I really. I'm probably going to give you one check untranslatable every episode at least. Um, I'm not uh, going to do every episode just only check, but right. But, I mean, I think you sh- you should be. You're trying to be, we're we're all trying to become polyglots here. This is how you yes, do sir. it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let me start by saying this. Mm-hmm. Today is for I mean you know this comes out on Monday, but today is the 23rd it's Thursday. Mm-hmm. I hope you're enjoying episode 17. It's great, isn't it? We're hilarious. Mm-hmm. You got so many great language learning tips today. Oh, man. I'm so jealous that you guys get to listen to that. Anyway. uh, However, for Chad, he doesn't have to listen to it again because he was there. Yes, sir. So what he can do instead is go to Hip Hop Kemp Festival. Have you heard of Hip Hop Kemp Festival? No. What is that? Hip Hop Kemp Festival is the largest music festival of any genre in Central and Eastern Europe. Okay. And it's been around since about 2002, and it's happening right now. Really? In Hradec Kralov, Czech Republic. Really? Czeske. Okay. Is that how they say it? Czeske? Uh, um, um, che- well, Czechia is the, the new, um, actually, I guess technically now it's not the Czech Republic. If you, if you look on Google Maps, it says Czechia now. Um, but I, um, I'm not sure what they, what they call their country in Czech. That's a really bad thing to not know how they say it. By the way, this is, I can already tell this is going to be a fun 10 months. I'm going right. to, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going to learn a lot and you're going to make me look like a fool for 10 <laughs> months, but, but it's worth it. it we'll We're all learn something start. from it. Right. Uh, I'm ex- I, I mean, it's, I, I, it, I, I, yeah, this is, it's all for learning and mm-hmm. making you a little bit embarrassed, but anyway, oh, sure. yeah, that's just, just, going just don't push me on the edge. So I'm, uh, I experienced the toast Jared. When I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we don't need that. Right. Chad comes on that um, podcast. Welcome to episode 32. <laughs> We're here. I'm in the Czech Republic. I haven't left my room in six days. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a problem. That's for, that's for sure. That would be a big problem. My untranslatable for the eighth week in a row is, what's the word again? Um, litost. My untranslatable for the 12th week in a row is la toast. <laughs> it's the feeling of emptiness inside, the feeling of fear. Humiliation. Humiliation. And misery. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the last episode, <laughs> but I'm not saying that there are many more. <laughs> so, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for t- to make some new friends, you know, experience Czech culture, learn some, bring back some great songs of the pod, mm-hmm. hit up Hip Hop Kemp Festival. Apparently, uh, you know, I, l- I learned about this festival because I, w- I, w- I wanted to, um, I was looking to, you know, I was doing some research and um, I was, I found out that they're cracking down, the cops are cracking down at, on drugs at a hip hop Kemp festival. Mm. So, um, you know, for all the uh, attenders of hip hop Kemp festival, get Be careful. 
get creative. <laughs> Be careful out there. What people. you can maybe do is like get the water bottle thing where I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a professional. Anyway, I do have some questions for you, Chad. Okay. Um uh oh yeah. So when what when, when you first got to your place, how did you get your keys to your place? So my my mentor met me at the bus stop and uh walked me to my mentor, place. Mentor, explain mentor also. So um well, I mean, she is here to help me adjust to the culture. Um, she helped me today. Uh, we went to the bank and opened up a check bank account. Um, you know, oh, she nice. helped. She helped arrange accommodations. Um, I'm not really sure, but I would guess probably somewhere in her 60s. Wow, probably somewhere <laughs> around there. Um, but she's my a next one- question was going to be: Is she single? But I, I, it's. I mean, know. she's she's my mentor, so I'm just not looking at her in, in that tight. light. <laughs> right but she's super nice uh-huh. dude i mean um if you if you get the chance to come here and meet her she's she's really nice um super friendly i was you know i'm really really impressed by her english i mean because we've been corresponding via email and you can't you know obviously because it's email you can't hear them talk so you have no idea how good their speaking skills are and i think reading and writing are two very different things from speaking um for sure and she is so articulate, um, has really a broad vocabulary, super nice. She drove me around uh, Homotov today and showed me all around. Um, there's this really beautiful lake. Um, she showed me the ice rink where there's a professional hockey team here, and they're in the first division, so they're, like, really good. Oh, cool. Yeah. You should um, go to a game. I, oh, I'm planning on going to quite a few. There's a teacher at we'll my school a, who's uh, a big a fan. We'll do uh, episode about it, about Sounds Czech good. sports. That, that's a great idea, actually. Uh, sports better, culture. Add, that's actually it is a good idea. Add, add that like, to the uh, list, my man. That's a great. See, dude, you don't even need me to text you topic ideas. They just organically come up when we're when we're just kind of talking. I wish people knew how you thought of uh, topic ideas too, because it is like you'll there'll be nothing it's for just days. So to random. Just blast me with like eight at a time. <laughs> yep, that's always how it happens. <laughs> well, see, dude, the way it would always happen is I would be driving to work in the morning, and it was like six a.m. And I had almost an hour drive every day and mm-hmm. the sun was coming up and I was kind of waking up and I'd just be listening to music and then like I'd hear a song lyric and I'd be like, oh, that'd be a cool pod episode or or I'd like song I just lyrics. yeah, song lyrics or I just like see something that would like make me, you know, just think about like, oh, that would be interesting to discuss with Jared or, uh, you know, I'm always I always got you on my mind, buddy, it. what, what we can do for our pod, you know, I love it. So, um, OK, so uh, so you're so is she like. Uh, an employee of of or or, or is this like she's a, a teacher at the thing? school oh okay, okay so okay. so the way so from my understanding you get placed in a school based on i had to make a list of which types of schools i would prefer to teach at so you have just like in germany you have the gymnasium which is like the kind of the the tops type of schools then they have military schools here they have nursing schools they have technical schools they have um like music conservatories and art schools um, there were eight different types of schools. I don't remember all eight of them off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure I listed gymnasium number one, um, arts and music, either two or three. Technical school was either the two or the three. And then I think from like four on, because I didn't know much about the schools, I just kind of figured, well, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to have the opportunity to come to the Czech Republic and, and teach and, and learn more about Czech culture and the Czech people and the right. language. It's not so, like you're going to accidentally end up teaching in like a prison or something. And be like, right. Oops. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, they wouldn't put you in a, in a scenario like that. But yeah. So so I, I got to tell you, man, I, I have been so lucky and fortunate and happy with the, the, the city I'm placed in. My mentor is amazing. She is so nice and, and compassionate and understanding. We've, she's already asked me a lot. Of, we've had like some deep conversations and I've known her for two days. Hit uh, that medium to hot level of small talk. That's right. We, we've been on the extra hot level of small talk. We've been talking Jeez. about, about politics. Is she about, <laughs> uh, Oh, Jared, you, you are too much. You are too much. But uh, but yeah, so so it's it's been. Sorry, what were you guys talking about? You just said politics. Politics about American politics. American politics, Czech politics, um, history. Um, we've also talked about you know I brought up like the Flint water crisis today. We were kind of talking about that. Wow. Um, yeah, we've Did been you talking about the untranslatable podcast. 
Not yet, but I will. You know, you know, you know me. I'm not one to. I try not to be a braggart about the things I do. And Dude, I mean, I say that, but I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to bring it up to to like uh, people myself. So, I mean, I love, I love what we're doing, and I have so much fun doing it. But I just. I feel I don't want to be that guy that's like always trying to market us. You know what I mean? Like those people no, are I so annoying, it. you know? They are annoying, but they're also successful. But I get it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be that person either. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, I got another. Okay, so I asked. Oh, yeah. And so she she got she got your key before you got there and you mm-hmm. met her and she took you to the place. Yes. Um, so you said that uh, you told me uh, when we were talking earlier that oh did you get a phone plan of any sort oh yeah oh yeah so i have a i have a check um check sim card in uh in one of my iphones is it just um, prepaid um i wanted to do prepaid but the the guy at vodafone said well if you're doing more texting it's actually smarter to get a plan so my plan is five gigs and uh i forget how many text messages i have to look but i forget how many text messages it is a month um but it's basically it's five gigs and I pay I think like thirty or thirty three dollars a month. So you it's know, not too oh, bad. That's what I missed so much was when we were in Austria having like a brick Pre-paid. phone that you mm-hmm. couldn't do anything with. Right. It was so freeing. So I think even though you have a smartphone with some internet access, that'll be nice if you get like lost or something. And th- you and don't have enough the... you don't have enough to like play around with. Right. And, well, and that's why I wanted to get a SIM card in in like a smartphone because I figured it would be good if I ever needed to look up something on the fly. If I, like right. you said, if I ever get lost, I can book, you know, tickets on my phone. I can check my bank account in the Czech Republic on that phone. Right. Um, you know, so so I just figured, you know what? It would be this time around. It's better to be safe than sorry. In Austria and Germany, I was never really too worried about, you know, if but I got you're lost, a little I bit could more protected there. I think. Yeah. Oh, I would agree. You had more security nets. Right. So. You also told me that you walked around for about eight miles the other day. Yes, sir. Yes, I did. I, wanna, that, I, I obviously want to hear about this. Okay, so that was in Prague, not in my town. Okay, but um, that was actually the first day I landed in the Czech Republic, and there were. Let me tell you a couple reasons why I did that. So the first reason was you stayed because, a night there or something before you went. Yeah, to before where you, I came to Chomutov, okay. I stayed there because um, I just. I was worried that if I tried to travel all the way, well, it's only a two-hour bus ride. So hey, by I the could, way, for the listeners, take a drink every time Chad says he, he was worried. Right? Oh, man, that'd be a bad drinking game. Jared, I don't <laughs> want all of our listeners to be blackout halfway through our pod. That would not be good. That would really not be good. But, um, yeah, so I basically, I just, I figured it would be easier to just chill in Prague for a day kind of relax um, yeah rest up get the uh work out the uh jet lag a little bit Ex- exactly so so i got there and actually one of the reasons why i walked so much was and it's a nice city Explore. oh it's beautiful have you been to prague before i have not i have not oh well just you wait man it is it is gorgeous by the way uh, fun fact i heard it's actually rated one of the nicest cities in europe and oh it yeah. has the most number of unisecco something you know the unisecco yeah, the, spots yep i think it has the highest number uh, like within the country I believe it. That that would make sense. Um, but yeah, so anyways, um, so yeah, so to, to kind of overcome the jet lag was one of the reasons. I also was, so I was exhausted. So this was my travel plans. I don't know if I explained this when we talked about the packing checklist, but so I got into Frankfurt at about 5.40 a.m. My flight didn't fly out to Prague until about, we didn't board the plane until about 9.40. So I had four hours to just, do whatever. And I didn't want to, you know, I, I couldn't, I can't fall asleep in airports. It just, to me, if, at least no. if I'm by myself, if I'm with other people, I probably could maybe. And I was definitely tired enough because I didn't sleep at all on the plane. Well, I had hard this, to just leave yourself, like, like leave yourself that vulnerable in an right. airport. <laughs> Ex- exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, so I get to Prague. I'm exhausted because I hadn't slept on the plane. Um, then the other plane from Frankfurt to Prague, it was, it said on my ticket it was going to be about an hour. I kid you not, dude. The flight took about 35 minutes. It was super nice. fast. It was great. Um, and so, but also a tip for all of our listeners out there. Um, I love just giving random tips when they come to mind. Um, 
if you are super tired, one of the best things you can do for your body and your mind, believe it or not, especially if you go on a long international flight and you've been, so I must have been at least 12 hours, 14 hours, no sleep, um, probably longer than that. Um, what you want to do is you want to eat more food than you usually would because what happens, I'm obviously, yeah, I'm obviously not a doctor, but it kind of makes sense, right? So if you, if you sleep, it gives your body time to rest and kind of recharge, right? But mm -hmm. if you aren't able to do that, I, I have a feeling your body probably has to expend more energy, aka so more calories. Right. Exactly. So you so want to charge eat more. Your, right. Exactly. That makes sense. It, yeah, yeah. So so um so I ate some food and kind of got a second wind um, on the flight over to the Czech Republic from uh, Frankfurt, and then I get to Prague and I'm a little tired, but the the taxi driver um, was a super nice guy and he was super talkative, so that woke me up a little bit. But I was lucky enough, I um, I stayed at this hotel in the new part of, of Prague, which was really nice, in uh, Nove, Mest, uh, Nove Mesto. And uh, I checked in a little early. I was worried, you know, they say online that I had to check in at 3. I got there around noon, and they actually let me go into my room at noon, which was great. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a quick hour nap. But what ended up happening was they were doing construction right across the courtyard, which means no nap for Chad. So... <laughs> So I thought, okay, I know I'm not going to be able to fall asleep. There's too much noise. And when I say construction, I mean literally like jackhammers and like like loud right. construction. And it right. was so hot in my room, I had to have the windows cracked. It just AC? No, no, dude. There's it's just like it's like most places in Europe. A lot of these buildings are very old. I'm right. sure AC is very expensive, so they just don't have it. I don't have AC in my apartment either. Um, is it hot know. in there right now? It's well, it's not too bad. It cools down at night, and I usually leave the windows cracked, and I can get a nice breeze. Do going you through. have a screen on your windows? Nope. Most places in Europe they don't do screens, so it's just uh, come on in. Yep. But the, the, I I wonder because I'm on the ninth floor and I'm so high up, I I haven't had many bugs in here. Okay. Okay. Um, but it hasn't been too bad. But yeah. So anyways, so back to back to my first day in Prague and walking eight miles. Um, so, yeah, so I decided, okay, I, I can't fall asleep. Um, when I got in, you know, it was like noon, so it was 6 a.m., so it's not like I could really, like, chat with any of, like, my friends back in the States because they were all either asleep or just waking up, right? I couldn't FaceTime with my good old buddy Jared, so I was like, okay, I got to find something else to do. I so, could have propped you up while I was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good hey, to buddy. know. <laughs> Good to know. In the future, in the future, I'll Facetime you at six a.m. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, so so I decided, all right, I'm just going to try to walk this jet lag off a little bit, and uh, so I changed in my shorts because it was really hot, and then I had to find the Vodafone place to get my SIM card. That was like the first thing on my checklist because I figured if I need to find anything in Prague instead of me having to walk all the way back to my hotel. Um, and then have to look it up and then walk back out. I can just Google it on my phone, right? Mm -hmm. And so I get my SIM card, and that was only about a five-minute walk from my hotel. I also, I don't know what it is, man, but I I have, I thought at first that I was going to have a lot of difficulty finding things in Prague. I don't know if I, not, not to toot my own horn, but I have a decent toot sense it. of direction. I think I think uh, I don't know why, but like I walked around and I was like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll turn down here. I'll turn down here. And there it was. And I think um, as someone that is an avid walker myself, I think what um, I, I think I have a good sense of direction, too, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to walking, because what it is more than anything, what I found is when, uh, like, like, for example, when I was in Tanzania in the. Mm -hmm. um, like in the in the like the country area, I just went out and just walked around for hours and it was like two hours. That's hours. Yeah. And um, I think what it is is e e what's even easier than if you were driving is you just have to generally know the direction right. of where you live. And right. it's like I don't need to make every right turn, like every correct mm -hmm. turn. I just need to know the general direction I'm walking in. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. And so, so yeah, so I, I found the Vodafone place really quick, got my SIM card. It took forever for my – the guy said, okay – the SIM card thing that's been activated, he said, wait five, 10 minutes and it, and it will work, right? And it was about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, this thing isn't working. I waited another 10 minutes. This thing isn't working. So I almost walked back there, but I was like, you know what? He didn't tell me to turn off my phone, but I'm going to turn it off and see what happens. And of course, I turn it off, turn it back on, and then boop, Vodafone CZ for the Czech Republic. 
um, and then it works. So there you go. Um, so then I actually met up with two of the other teachers that will be uh, teaching actually in the same region as me, different different places, but all in the in the same like northwestern part of the Czech Republic, which is uh, Bohemia. And uh, and so I met up with them at four o'clock at this really cool cafe called Tri Cafe. And uh, and that was about a mile away from my hotel room. So I walked from there. Then I walked ar- uh, along the Vltava River, which is the beautiful How long did you guys uh, meet up for? We met up for a couple of hours. We were we were just kind of okay. talking about, you know, well, why why did we choose the Czech Republic? Wow. Where did we I'm go I'm looking to at school? pictures of this place. It looks like someone's, like, nice, like, uh, house. Oh, Tri Cafe? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Um, yeah, and... And the the I guess wow this looks it looks like someone's house. I mean I'm sure it probably was at one point somebody's house and they probably just turned it into a cafe. But, yeah, um, I guess so. But the the I don't know. Do you, do you call them baristas if they're not in Starbucks? The, the, what do you what do you call them? <laughs> but but whoever you know the the guys who right. are there taking our halfway orders. between a, a waiter and a barista. Right, a uh, 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 warista, I guess. <laughs> Or, or or a baiter that that could be bad. <laughs> <laughs> a new on translatable, right, everyone. Right. A, a new word. You, you heard it here first. Um, but yeah, so they were they were really nice, and uh, and so we just had you know had some coffee and kind of chit chatted for a while. Um, and then of course uh, I also had to have uh, had to get a derna kebab. That's of a course. that's a must. Um, for those, well, of I mean, who, you're doing it to fight the the jet lag. I mean, this is for survival. Right. It is <laughs> for for utter and dear survival for sure. And so, um, so yeah, so, and then after that, like I said, I walked around the Vltava River, and then uh, I walked back to my um, hotel, and I looked at my phone, and it was eight miles. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, over fourteen thousand steps. How did how did the Czech do not compare to a uh, Austrian or German one that you're more used to? Well, uh, I mean, also, this is the first place that you've ever right. been to, so I, it's hard to judge it. Right. I w- well, I can you're tell. you're about to shit on it. <laughs> yeah, you can tell from my tone of voice, can't you? <laughs> or from my size, I guess. But, um, <laughs> ooh. Right. right I yeah. mean, they're nice people. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, so let me say this. It was good, but one, it was super hot and I was overheated, which is not the time to eat a donor. It's just okay, not. Well, that's not on them. Right, exactly. I think it's better hot than too hot than not hot enough. Well, well, I'm talking about my my body temp. Like I was sweating. Right, 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 right. right. But uh, was was it chaff? It, oh, of course I got the spicy. You know I got the spicy <laughs> always, always and forever. But uh, but so I can tell you though the reason why I think it wasn't very good is it was the the chicken that was you know on the whatever that spinny thing is called the uh, you know what I'm talking about though the chicken rotisserie. The, thank you. It it just it the spigot. Yeah, whatever it is, it wasn't. It was good, but I think I've had better quality chicken from like a rotisserie f- f- for a dona. It just didn't seem. Also, as, chicken's as fresh. not my favorite uh, meat for the dona. What do you usually get? What did they have in the Zeals? It wasn't chicken. It wasn't, what, wasn't yeah, that? it was. It was chicken, and they had lamb. Did you? You? Oh yeah, you used to get the lamb, didn't you? I feel like I did. You did and get I the feel lamb. Like I wouldn't want the chicken from that sort of. I, I, I like if you're gonna do it. I feel like you gotta. Right. Like you gotta I do I, I always get the chicken. You know. Oh, I didn't you know, know that. Me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I always get the chicken. But I mean, it was Chad's good. Chad's a little quirky. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that for so long, and I have to finally you gotta use it. use it, especially now that I can hear you. Um, exactly. Hear all your drops. But yeah. So, so I got the chicken. It was. But I think honestly, man, the reason why it wasn't as good is the sharf, the spicy sauce, wasn't on point. It wasn't that spicy. Okay, that's um, always a disappointment. If right. you expect shop and it comes back, eh. Right, it was just kind of mild. It was definitely, if it would have been a small talk topic, it would have not been a hot topic, that is for <laughs> sure, without a doubt. But yeah, so, and then after that, you know, I was like, well, it's only 7.30 or 8 o'clock. I might as well walk around a little bit. So I walked around, and then I got back to my hotel around 8.30. Passed and, out. Uh, I passed out, but here's the weird thing, man. I was hoping... My ideal situation would have been, excuse me, my to ideal situation me. would have been, yes, one, to record <laughs> a podcast with you, but I was actually hoping to fall asleep at like 8.30 uh-huh. and then wake up like really early, like four or five o'clock in the morning right? and then walk around Prague more and take pictures yep. as the sun was coming up, right? Oh, nice. That would have been awesome, but that's not what happened. What happened was I woke up at about 11.30 
and my room was a sauna. <laughs> Damn, you slept yeah, dude, for I over s- twelve hours? No, 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 no. Eleven thirty, like I slept oh, three at- hours. Oh, oh, that's way worse. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so I wake up three hours later, and I'm just drenched. My bed is drenched because right. my room was a sauna. Because I think it was just where the room was located. Um, and then I had the windows open, and the windows would like close. So the windows were like shut when I wanted them open. Mm. It was just too hot. And then I think it was just me being so excited to like get to my like get to my like city right. and meet my mentor. The journey's not over. Exactly. So so I was wired. I woke up at eleven thirty and my mind was going a thousand miles an hour. And so I didn't fall asleep until about two in the morning. Damn. So I watched like some stand up on Netflix. Um I, I studied a little bit more Czech. Um, who'd you watch? What, what, what stand up? Uh, Dimitri Martin. He had a new net. Oh yeah. I heard he's, I saw he's got a really good. Yeah. I I haven't seen it, but I I heard about it. I was really hoping that Bert, uh, Kreischer's was out on Netflix, but that's not out for another couple of, Ooh, it might be out today. I'll have to look. I think it comes out on Friday. Is it tomorrow? Okay. So it's already out for people to stick to it. Right. Uh, you're welcome. Bert Kreischer for that bump. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) right. Like, like he needs one that I, one that I haven't seen that's been out for a while that I really need to see is John Mulaney. I, I don't oh, know. Oh, it's why. great. I've seen it. It's. Great. I mean, he's great. I, I he's always great. I, and I, I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just bad at I, like I I just listen to too many podcasts. And I'm bad at right. sitting down and, and and watching stuff on Netflix. Right. And and I love stand up. But uh. But yeah. So I, I watched some stand up, studied a little check, um, listened to some music, um, and then finally was able to fall asleep. And I'll tell you the way I fell asleep. Um, a buddy of mine. Shout out to my buddy Ian, that I studied with at uh, Michigan State. Um, Vicodin. He he. No, sadly not. Not. <laughs> I've actually never never had any of those those pain meds. But anyways, um, he it's probably for the best. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. Um, after working working in a pharmacy for six years, I've grown a Ooh. very healthy fear for all those. Have things. you seen Have you seen people that are like, oh, this person? Oh, for sure. For sure. Got a, like I've this guy got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's a lot of people that have. I think. I think some of those pain pills, man, are a lot worse than than other like recreational drugs oh, people sure. can use. For sure, um, they're more potent, they're more addictive. But anyways, that's a that's a talk for another pod. Um, so anyways, so yeah, so what I did to fall Much asleep harder to was get in Europe. Uh, yeah, and anyways, um, my my buddy uh, Ian was telling me what you need to do if your mind is racing and you need to shut your mind off to fall asleep is you need to do something that is difficult for your mind. So what you do is you close your eyes and you try to visualize something. And when I say visualize something, I don't mean you close your eyes and you talk about it. Like, you know how you can like have that voice in your mind of like, okay, I see mountains, there's snow on the tips of the mountains or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what you do. You literally try to visualize it like you can see it with your eyes open. And so what I did was my mentor had sent me pictures of the view from my apartment, which is a beautiful view. We'll have that up on Instagram or Twitter very soon. Don't worry. I'm waiting for that perfect sun uh, sunrise or, or right. uh, sundown shot for Jerry. Email us at Untranslatable Podcast to tell us what that hour is. Exactly. <laughs> what that word is. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, so yeah, so I tried to visualize the mountains and, and everything, and I fell asleep pretty quick after that. Interesting. So, so, yeah, so that worked really well. That's why I like having the German, I, German books next to my bed mm. because if I can't sleep, uh, like reading in German is like a challenging thing for my brain. Oh, definitely. So like, like, because you really have to focus. Like, at least, oh yeah, you, I really have to focus. Well, I still do German, too. and so I like to like it helps me fall asleep if I'm struggling to uh, fall asleep. Right, I believe it. And I'm learning too. You know, it's all it's, it's, it's a all, win-win. Yeah, this is how we become polyglots, people. Very, very true. I will say a lot of the initial questions I have, I had, you already answered. I was going to ask what was the first place you made sure you located. I would mm-hmm. say that was a Vodafone store. The next question yep. I was going to ask was, what kind of phone plan do you have? You yep. answered that. Yep. Uh, eight miles walking, journal, uh, process of moving into your place. You told me that. That was mm-hmm. with your mentor. Have you met? Oh, you've met some of your coworkers. Well, well, no. So I've met some fellow teachers, but they will be in different towns and cities. Okay, so they so are not, not my they're not really your direct coworkers. But I did meet a coworker, a fellow English teacher, actually, when my mentor was showing me around um, Khomotov. She was showing me that uh, she was showing me where the laundromat is because I don't have a washer and dryer in my apartment, so I'll have to go to the laundromat. Thankfully, I, that was another question I had. Thankfully, it's right around the corner. I'm I'm very lucky 
um, very, very lucky that my apartment uh, is located right downtown. So I have two grocery stores that are both within a minute, not even a minute walking distance. I mean, one's literally across the street. The other nice. one's like two streets away. The laundromat, oh, the laundromat is around the corner as well. There's a nice shopping center right around the corner. Um, the um, town center, like where the where they have this beautiful church and some really nice restaurants, is like maybe a two minute, three minute walking distance. And my school is probably tops. If I'm if I'm walking really slow, it's maybe ten minutes. But I would say you could get there in five to eight minutes if you're really. That's really not trying bad to get at all. Fast. Either yeah. way, that's not bad at all. Exactly. Um, and it was interesting because when my mentor was driving me around um, the city today, you know, she showed me houses that were further out. And I was like, man, I can't even imagine if, if you know, that's where my apartment would have been. You know, it'd be a 20, maybe even 30 minute walk into school. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm it very lucky. Isn't terrible. That's not terrible. I mean, it's not too bad, but, you know, we Although it'll get terrible early. when it's. Uh, yeah, let's rainy start or winter, when right? Exactly. When there's any sort of inclement weather. Well, even now it's so hot. I don't want to go to school in, right. in pools of sweat. That's not a good look right. to start to start no. your your teaching year with your students. So you said the uh, the duna you had was just okay. Mm-hmm. Now uh, I would highly recommend that you try the popular. Have you heard of this? Speka check, speka check. Uh, nope. What is it? Unhealthy for your body, but so good for your soul. Okay. Um, Spekacek is a, uh, is a sausage, uh, like a sausage, uh, meal. Not oh, a meal. That's good. But like it's a, dish? A, it's a, no, it's not even a dish because it's really just a sausage. Okay. But it's kind of a, a staple in, uh, a staple in, in Czech Republic. And the thing about Spekacek is they claim that it has to specifically be eaten over a, um, over a, like a campfire. Like that's, uh, that's the, uh, the only way to eat it. Mm. And it's a, a sausage dish and there's like, and, uh, and yeah, it looks delicious, but you haven't heard of it. And I, I'd say while you're there, Make sure you find a speck of check. In the Czech Republic, the speck of check is a social thing. It mm. tastes best when you eat it with other people. When you are sitting around a campfire singing, playing the guitar, that's where you come in. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, for all the people wondering, Chad made our amazing uh, <laughs> intro and outro with his simple chord progressions. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know why I had to insult your uh, song like that at the end. <laughs> now, now I got to write a new one. Thanks, Jared. All that hard work. That's what I was really just negging him, so he would say that and do that. No, right. I'm um, and relaxing. Oh, that does this look is good. What it's, this is what it's about. In the company of friends, the Spekacek. Actually, I wonder if I'm pronouncing this correctly. You're not. Let, I can tell you right now you're not. Let me. Do you want, do you want to plug my computer? In? I can just plug it in and, and play it for the people. Well, nope. Nope, no, you're not. You're you're not taking away my thunder, Jared. Let me. Okay. Let me give this one a try. Hold up. Let me. I just want to make sure I see how it's spelled because I'm slowly starting to learn the Czech alphabet. Um, and so if I see how it's spelled, so here's the difference, Jared. So it's only in word stress. Um, so you're saying it the way we would say it in America. It's actually Spekacek. Spekacek. Oh. Spekacek. Spekacek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, uh, yeah, I pronounced it like an American. Spekacek, Spekacek right. <laughs> Spekacek. Mm-hmm. How do you know where to put the pronunciation? Is it based off of some of those accent marks on top? I, I believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm asking you like you're a pro. Eventually, hopefully, I will be. You know about but... three phrases. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, tell me the, uh, the, sense, the word structure. Um, yeah, so uh, that seems like a... Uh, I, I challenge you, Chad, mm-hmm. to uh, to get some people around a campfire and eat some spekacek and uh, and relax. Bring your uh, guitar. Does your guitar have a um, speaker on it? Your travel guitar? It do, it does not. But I have this little tiny baby amp right here. Nice that has batteries. So, but Chad's prepared for a spekacek. I, I am, um, but what I'm actually hoping to do while I'm here, you know me, Jared, you know how, how much I love guitars. Yes, I'm I actually do. hoping to uh, see if I can find, there's a brand of guitars that are only produced in Europe, and you can only buy them in Europe, so I'm hoping by to buy way. 
a little acoustic one. Yeah. I was just laughing to myself because you were talking about how you pack so cleverly because you wanted to make a point to be frugal and not buy clothes. And you're, <laughs> you're only being frugal so you could buy this dope uh, guitar. Caught me. <laughs> caught me right handed, Jared. You caught me. Uh, I'd call that uh, smart rather than frugal. Right. Use your money wisely. And, you know, if it's something you truly love, you might as well invest in it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, we don't have to do – do you have anything – is there some story you want – oh, I, oh, never mind. You, there's, I was going to say about a bank. I, I do have some stories, but but what else do you got for me before I get into That's my it. stories? That's it. That's Please, it. Please, I want to hear your All stories. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, right. yeah. So, like I've mentioned earlier in this episode, it's been a very humbling – um, experience and also quite a learning experience um, being around a group of people where I only understand bits and pieces of the language. I can't really say very much in the language yet. And also, this is what surprised me the most so far, Jared, about being here is I'm very shy and apprehensive to speak Czech, which is interesting because usually like when I was starting to learn basic Spanish, I was trying to speak it with a lot of people. I didn't care if I made mistakes and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it just... I. I mentally think the language is more difficult or or what, but I I have been like super like shy in trying to speak the the little Czech I know. And the other weird thing that I've noticed too is a couple times I've went to go say something and, and German will come out my mouth and then I'm like, oh like, <laughs> like that's not what I'm I can trying imagine to do. that. I can mm-hmm. imagine that happening. Right, where so. it's it's almost like a uh, fight or flight response to be like, oh no, I I, I could speak a foreign language. Like, oh no, that's you. It, I mean, you're so out of your element, and right. um, and it's it's been a, a long time. You know, you've traveled abroad a bunch, re- mm-hmm. not a bunch, but you've traveled ab- abroad over the past couple of years, mm-hmm. about a couple times, a few times, a handful of times, I would say. But mm-hmm. it's all been to places that you know, it's all been to Germany or Austria, where it's like you know the language and you've or, never really been or, challenged, or even the Netherlands, where they speak flawless English. Right, right. So, and so the Netherlands is is also. One of the nicest. That's the, the, one of the nicest places I've ever been to. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. They, like they, they, they're like no nicest is in like the people. It oh, is beautiful yeah. too. But I mean, the people are so freaking nice there mm-hmm. too. Right. So yeah. So basically, like I was saying, it's been a very humbling experience for me to. I mean, sometimes, honestly, man, I felt kind of lost. Like when I, like, I don't know if I told you, but I went to the grocery store earlier to just grab a couple things, and the lady was asking me a bunch of things in Czech. And I had to just tell her, um, um, you know, I, I don't speak Czech. Nemluvim um, Chesky, uh, which means I don't speak Czech. Um, but it's it's just been strange because, you know, I've asked people, Mluvite um, Anglitsky, which means do you speak English? And like I said, it's been about 50-50. But here's, right. and this leads me to my story today, Jared. So like I said, my mentor was gracious enough to take me to the bank and help me set up a Czech bank account. And we get there and, you know, we, we greet, we greet the, the person helping us. And, and what you say to most people in the Czech Republic when you greet them is, is um, dobri, dobri den, which is like good day, kind of, you know, just like in Germany, if you say guten tag, right? Mm-hmm. Dobri den. And so we get there and, and we, we all say dobri den to each other and we sit down. And then my, my mentor starts, you know, speaking rapid fire Czech. I'm not understanding a single word, obviously. <laughs> the, the, the lady at the bank is also, you know, responding in Czech. And then after, after my mentor explains the situation, you know, I'll be living here for 10 months. I'm, I'm an English teacher, you know, teaching at the school just down the road. And I, I need to set up a Czech bank account. Um, and we actually went to one other bank first. And they actually needed my tax information, like if I was paying taxes in America or in the Czech Republic. And they told us it would take up to two weeks for them to op- just open an account for me. So, so we were like, this okay, we're fancy bank. Yeah. So, so we went to a different bank to see, which is actually the same bank that my mentor uses. And so we go there, and she explains my situation, and then, um, and then she asks, um, she asks the the woman, Nuvete um, Anglitsky, do you speak English? And she says, ne. Which means no. <laughs> and I Not was... I know, which means yes. Exactly. Which they also said a lot when they were talking. The, the lady, like when she was kind of following her, kind of like we say, yeah, uh-huh, or okay. She was like, I know, I know, I know. I know. Okay. 
I also, dude, I love the sound of Czech. It just the the way the stress of the language. It sounds really cool, like the because it's just a different word stress than than we use in English. I think, like the yes. patterns and the rhythm of the language, I think sound really beautiful. But anyways, for example, spekacek, spekacek. Exactly, exactly. And Even so, when I say spekacek, I it sounds weird. <laughs> right, but anyways, so um, so they're talking right, and they're. And so she asks her if she speaks English. She says no. And then halfway through, as we're getting everything set up, you know, I'm giving her my information. Um, my mentor is is doing an amazing job translating back and forth for her, telling me what's going on. Well, my mentor has to take a phone call. And so uh, this lady's typing up the stuff in her computer. And then in, like, flawless English, she asks me, are you married? And I'm like, no. And then in flawless <laughs> English, she asks me, do you have children? And I'm like, No. And and I, I should have acted more shocked and surprised, but I guess I didn't. And uh, and then and then my mentor gets off the phone, and then they start going back to check again. And then maybe those are very like just standard phrases. I mean, they, they very well could be, and it could have even been written on the page. And I'm sure most people, if they've how, had how did it, it sound? How did it come out? I mean, like I said, really good English. I mean, it was clear. Okay. There, there so it were, didn't come out like someone that he was just reading, or it was just no, like. It, a, I mean, it came out like somebody knows what they're saying. Okay. So that's what, that's what, I mean, it did kind of catch me off guard. And then, so then my mentor gets off the phone and, and, you know, then they go back to Czech, which, which is fine. You know, I have no problem with that. I, I can respect it. I'm in the Czech Republic. That's. Can you respect it? Because you really did make a point to say it's fine. Well, well, well here. So this, so this is why this is fine. I respect it. I mean, it's fine. Well, so this is, so this is what, um, so this is really what, um, surprised me though is so you know where she's my mentor is translating for us and you know i'm saying stuff and then when i say stuff i can see that the woman clearly understands what i'm saying she's shaking her head she gets it oh couple, when you're talking to yeah, her <laughs> in, in english and then a couple times i like cracked like a little joke and she kind of giggled too oh my god and but then <laughs> but then what was really interesting is towards the end i had to sign a bunch of papers and so i thought i was done signing them and 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 I went to go hand her the pen. And she said, "No, you're not done yet." And I'm like, and I'm and I'm like, "Wow, okay." And then after I get done signing everything, she goes, "There you go, all finished." And like, it would yeah, be okay, one thing mind. if those it, aren't set phrases that she has, right? <laughs> right. And and it would have been one thing if it would have been very like broken English, or she said it very slowly, or she struggled to say it, but she said it really well. And then. What was really funny is my, my mentor kind of laughed and we were walking out of the bank and she said, she said, you'll probably experience this a lot where you ask them, do they speak English? They'll say no, but they can definitely understand it because they took it in school and um, they might just be very shy or, or nervous to speak with a native speaker, which I also totally understand. Dude, you know, I, I was going to ask you that when you first said that it was 50 50. I was like, I wonder if they just like are don't want to speak or and, like and, nervous to speak. Right. And that very well could be. But I think I think especially if any of them were to get to know me, um, especially know that I'm an I'm an English teacher. I feel like English teachers should be the least judgmental, at least if we're talking about like English as a foreign language English teacher. So I'm not talking about your English literature teacher. I'm talking about somebody who teaches English to, to foreigners, right? Yeah. I mean, but even though she knows you're an English teacher, I don't know if well, she's she, really thinking about right, it like that. Like right. she's not like, he's an English teacher. He understands. He's. I think she's just seeing you as a person, not, not like thinking that much into the fact that you're well, an sure. English teacher. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Um, but yeah, so... So, so yeah, so th- that was just kind of a funny, funny little story that she spoke so, actually so really good English. What does that mean? So does that mean, do you have to ask if they speak English and if they say nay, you just persist with English like a, a douche? No, I usually try, if they say no, I try to use the little amount of check I know. And if that doesn't work, then I'll resort to just Goodbye. trying to use body languages, you know, body language and Shimmy gestures. a little bit. That's right. Shit. Hey. Shimmy and all, <laughs> always always gets the point across for sure. Um, but yeah, so I, I try to do that. And then my last resort then is English. And if they really don't understand what I'm saying, my last, last, last resort then is try it in German. Um, and then has if, that ever worked? Well, I haven't had to use that. I haven't had to try it yet. Okay. So thankfully, I haven't had to try it yet. So it's been okay. But um, but I mean that's the thing about English also is I think, you know, although it is hit, hit or miss in some places, mm-hmm. but like. It's definitely growing just the number of people in uh, 
in uh, Europe, especially that just can't speak English. Right. Oh, for sure. Definitely. And the, and the other thing too, though, that I um, would also like to mention if, if it's all right with you uh, to just go on to our next segment, which is our check word of the pod, please. Uh, um, because I learned this word today while I was at the bank with my uh, mentor and with this lady. So this lady was entering my information, trying to get my online banking and my account set up. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they were talking and uh, the, the woman was typing something and she couldn't get it to work. And she clicked a couple things and typed a couple things. And then she said, parada. 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 And do you have any guesses what parada means? Address, phone number? No, para, parada is like excellent or great. Ah. Oh. So that was a new l- word I learned today. And then So that's when you could just drop like uh like hey, let's meet here at this time. Parada. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I like that. And and it was really funny though, as we were leaving and uh I, I signed my last form, she said, Okay, you're all done and I said parada and my mentor and she laughed. Um so, <laughs> so I thought that was kinda cool. You know, it's always great when you These can, are beautiful moments. People. They are. They if really you are. Uh, be, people should be appreciating what's happening right now. This oh is, yeah. They, this is things people can only dream about in Lifetime movies. Exactly. This is where the song comes in. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that light shines down <laughs> like from the heavens. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, but so, so, yeah. So kind of cool. And it's always nice, too, when you learn words in context and you can reuse them in a similar context, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And people love that. Mm-hmm. I've, I've noticed that in just about every country I've gone to. When you just casually drop, uh, like like when they, especially when they know you can't speak their language and they know you're American, mm-hmm. and uh, and you just casually drop like a, a phrase in their language, they, people always love that. Oh, for sure. Well, it's I've sh- never not done that and seen people get uh, and people not get like crazy excited. Once again, don't do that double negative that I just did. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every. Right. <laughs> I mean, I completely agree. I think it shows that you. You you care about the culture. You you're trying to learn the language and and, and yeah, that you're listening great. to them. No, that too. That's always important. And speaking of listening, Jared, uh, what should our audience be listening to regarding our song of the pod this week? I found myself listening to something new th- uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, not yesterday. And his name is Brushy One String. Uh, Chad, Great why name. do you think he's called Brushy One String? Because he brushes that one string probably on his instrument. Yes, yes. His actual name is Andrew Chin. He's uh, Jamaican, and it's uh, reggae. He's a he's a reggae singer and guitarist. One string. I he probably plays a normal guitar as well somewhere, or I'm sure he knows how to play a normal guitar. But I've only ever seen him play one string, because he's brushy one string baby. That's right. And um, so brushy one string uh, played a has a song called Chicken in the Corn, and. Uh, Chad, as a guitarist, I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you about the one string guitar because it okay. seems highly inefficient to me. Okay. And uh also, how does how does that how does someone end up playing a one string? Is it does it come from like a poverty thing or um I mean I mean I mean I don't know enough about this artist to to say why he specifically uses one right. string. Right, right, right. But I but I guess as a musician and, and a guitarist, I could I would say that I think some of it might just have to do with um, probably what either how he learned how to play it, what he has laying around. I'm also curious if he always just uses the one string, and I think it's either the A string or the D string on a guitar, which the A string would be the fifth string, so it's the second lowest in pitch. The D string would be the um, fourth string, um, uh, um, um, I I've, guess third lowest in pitch. I believe I've seen him use both. Oh, really? So an A string or a D string. Interesting. Because I've definitely seen him use the lowest one, whatever that one is. Like the Oh, top really? String. Okay, so he's used an E string before as well. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure at least the, the tiny the desk lowest, concert, right? the lowest is E, yes. Okay. But, but, but I don't uh, know guitars. <laughs> but on the, but on, I know for a fact on the tiny desk concert, which is not our song of the pod, but you guys should also, all our listeners out there should definitely give that a listen as well. Um, that I'm pretty sure was the A string because it wasn't all the way down on the that looks fingerboard. Like the, that's not the lowest string. That looks like the lowest string to me. Um, hold up, let me. Isn't look. that? I'm looking at a picture. If you just type in "brushy one string" on Google, uh, the first picture that comes up will be from his tiny desk. Okay, hold up. Let me let me Google it real quick because 
I'm willing to bet you it's not the E string. Um, I don't think. I it mean, is. you're. I mean, you're the guitarist, but I'm. I'm, I'm generally right, curious I'm, about I'm, the I'm, whole one string. I'm good. One thing I while you're doing this, one thing mm-hmm. I did like about the uh, about the one string is it does allow way more percussion usage mm-hmm. with the acoustic guitar. I did enjoy that. Oh, yeah, that was great. That's one yeah. very uh. great thing about... Um, oh, okay, wait. So I see a picture of him. No, the dude, tiny that, desk. No, dude, that's for sure the A string. I'm like... Is that the third string? That's the... Oh, see, if I could zoom in better, I could see... Oh, They took up, away... Uh, on. Um, by the way, on Google, they took away the ability to... View, uh, oh, Chad's listening to us. No, I'm trying to find the string. Oh, 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 oh. okay, so it depends because I've seen pictures of him where he has it. So, huh? So, here's the weird thing, Jared. Here's the weird thing about this. So, I think he might actually be playing an A string, but it looks like he has it in the wrong string slot, or as we guitarists ah. call it, the nut, because it doesn't look far, far enough down. But then if you look at the peg, the only peg he has in would be the peg for the E string. Interesting. So he has an A string and an E spot. Or he ha- No, I think he may have an E string in the A spot. Ah, okay. That's really strange, though. But, yeah. The the one thing, though, that I, that I do like about it is about him playing. Um, but, see, this is so weird. But then I see another picture, and he has the, the peg in the A slot. So the, so the jury is kind of out on this one. I think it could be an A or an E string. Um, I think maybe maybe he moves it around. Right. Very well could be. Um, but it's definitely one of the, of the lower out. strings on the guitar. Interesting. I see a picture of him playing a uh, playing a, like a jazz guitar, an electric guitar, and he just has that one string. I I I would be willing to bet though that he probably. Oh yeah, I see that picture. That yep. looks like it's from like yep. the seventies. Right. Good looking dude back right. in the day. I would be willing to bet you some serious money, though, Jared, that, that he probably learned how to play on a guitar with one string, which is why he just stuck with it. And and the the guy might very well be able to play like a six string guitar, no problem. I'm sure um, he can. But at the same time, I, mean, I th- actually see a picture of him playing one right now. I'm still oh, okay. some pictures. Oh, too. nice. Okay. But yeah, I'm sure it's yeah. He likes the sound of the one string and the style right. of it. I'm sure it, exactly is probably what it is. And and it kind of makes it his own thing. You know, I mean, how many? Right. I mean, shoot, how many guitarists out there play? You know, a regular yeah. old six string it's guitar. That's his goddamn name. Right. It, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. So so okay. Sweet. So I just found this picture of him, and I can see as I said. So it looks like the guitar, he puts it in the A slot, which would be, or the, the nut in the A string, which is the second, um, like, highest slot. Right. But I'm looking at the string thickness, and to me, the thickness looks closer to a, a, the lowest string, which is an E string. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. To put a string in the wrong hole, does it take some adjusting of the hole, or, or are they big enough to fit any string? Well, um, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like when so, you're feeding it through yeah, each end. Yeah. So the so the hole in the in the tuning peg, um, I mean, unless you're using like, I think generally speaking, they tend to be close to the same size. Um, okay. Because I don't think they. I could be wrong. And but then you I like think, tighten it within the hole. Well, well, no, you tighten it by winding the string around, and and if you re, if you string it properly. You'll okay. actually have the string kind of come up, and then when it wraps around, that wa- that first wrap will kind of lock the string in place. Interesting. Yes. So, so for any of our listeners out there who want to learn how to play guitar, um, that's a good way to restring a guitar is you pop it up, and then the string wraps around it, and it will lock it in place so it will stay in tune uh, more accurately and usually longer. Um, so, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. The song of the pot is Chicken in the Corn by Brushy One, one String. And um, first of all, one thing I liked about his music is that, especially since I was watching videos of him playing, is that uh, he's definitely uh, you can definitely like feel it like just by watching him play mm-hmm. is uh, he, he he's he's very uh, emotional with it. He's, he's into, into it, it for sure. Yeah, I love that. I mean, that's 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 half the battle battle of being a performer in general is mm-hmm. is selling it, not just making good music. Right. <clears throat> that's why. uh Jimi Hendrix played uh, Bob Dylan songs. Uh, Chicken in the Corn. So let me read some uh, some of the uh, lines because um, obviously it's hard to understand to a normal uh, 
to like a, a normal to a, a American English speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, so chicken of the corn, say the corn can't grow mama. That's he says that over and over again mm-hmm. on the way on my way to San Francisco where I buck my friend and his name was Poncho. He said one string. There's something you got to know when you are back on your saddles and our horses where we go. We sing this chicken in the corn and the corn can't grow mama. Uh, and then, you know, says it over and over again. Duh, don't need to brag. No need to boast. I can rock you from a pillow to a post to a post uh, to post to post. When the music's nice, we play them twice while the girls are screaming out like mice. My name is Brushy. I'm the king of swing to rap your music and to let uh, you sing. And he does actually some sort of like rapping in there. I, I wouldn't call it rapping. I mean, it's rapping for someone that doesn't know how to rap. But uh, it's 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 what I like about reading it as someone that can't really understand, you know, his Jamaican accent in the song. You know, you can pick out a, a line or a word or a sentence every here and there, but it's hard to. What I like about it is that when you read it, it really does read as uh, like poetry, mm-hmm. especially the way oh, that there's sure. st- that it stands that out as well. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, it does. It, it 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 even reads as poetry more than it would read as a song. Right. Because I think I think songs, if you're reading a song, lines tend to be longer than than these ones are. Right. These are very short line. Like it just it's very it's very poetry esque to me when you read it. Right. Oh, I, w- I would definitely agree with you. So I also am looking up right now why he um, used one string. And it says he actually had a dream that uh, that he had this perfect instrument and it was just a one string guitar. And I think f- with his music, and especially because it's voice and guitar, I right. think the fact that it's one string and the way he plays it, he actually kind of plucks it almost like a bass kind of. You know what I mean? Yep. It's more to hold a beat to me. Ex- exactly. The, perfect. You hit the nail on the head. I think. Oh, it's, is that what you're gonna say? Yeah. I mean, it's. Oh. <laughs> I think it's it's definitely to be percussive, and it lays down a really good beat, rhythm, and groove for his music, which then allows right. his voice to really, I mean, shine. You know, it's very soulful. It's 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 just great. So yeah, everybody out there, please check out um, Brushy One String. Um, Obviously, plays with one string, does a great job with it. I, I could mm-hmm. for sure not rock one string. And I think sometimes the best music is, the, is in a way very simple. And if you only have one string, I mean, you literally only have 12 notes you can play on a guitar, and that's it. Besides, like, if you yeah. slide or something like that. So but sometimes I see that. Right. But sometimes the beauty is definitely in the simplicity, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially since, as I said earlier, you can just like sense so much of his emotion and and passion when he's singing. Oh, definitely. So, and I, that's half. I think that's half the battle is feeling feeling what you what you're playing. Might even be, might even be more than half the battle. Um, right. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So everybody, please check out our Twitter, Untranslatable One, and we will have that song up for you um, yes. very soon. Check that out. Um, Brushy one string, chicken in the corn. Thank you so much, Jared, for uh, sharing that with me because that that was a great pick. Um, yeah, I picked it uh, like it was interesting to me, but I was like, this is something when I I thought of you even before I thought of me liking it. I was like, this is something that seems like would at least intrigue Chad. Oh, for sure, In- intrigue is definitely a great word to use because right. it, it did, and and just the technique, the way he plays. Yeah, the, one of my favorite my favorite thing is is to to see musicians who really do things in a unique way, whether it's just the, the, the music they make, like, like the sounds, like if you look at any Jimi Hendrix record and you look at the music that came out at that time or before that time, nobody was really doing what he was doing. I mean, the sounds Mm -hmm. he could really make that guitar sing, cry and wail like nobody else at the time and open the door for many other guitarists, you know, up until now who, who can do that. Um, right. Obviously, maybe not to the same level or ability because I think Jimi Hendrix was surely one of a kind. But even Brushy One String, you know, he just he he makes the instrument his own, which I think is always great to see any musician do that. And I think I think it's also I think it would be no offense to say that people have like grown upon um, upon Jimi Hendrix and 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 made it bigger and better because I think that's Mm -hmm. almost kind of like. You know, I I, I, I kind of compare it to like Tony Hawk, 
Whereas like Tony Hawk is undeniably one of the greatest, but uh, like you know, if he was still young enough to you know skate like he, you well, know, he's still like he did his prime. He can still well, I know he does, it, but if but he was yeah. young enough to like you know be a professional, like in in today's age, like I still think he like people he would say that people I mean, he does does say this. I've heard interviews with him. Mm -hmm. I like Tony Hawk, but he says that like yeah, it's like people are doing stuff that I could only have dreamed of doing when I invented the like when when I first did the nine hundred or something right. like that. Oh, for he's sure. He's like they're like. And I think that that's kind of what happens with, with music, too. It's like, yeah, there might be someone that might have been the greatest, like mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix is mm -hmm. known for one of, being one of the greatest. Right. But uh, I think one of the beauty of being the greatest is people are perfecting it, but it's all based off of the greatness that you started. So people might oh, be, either be perfecting or grow or changing or making it better, but it's all, you know, a lot, not all, obviously, but a lot of it's based off of, you know, something that you started invented and, and just because you were weird and you, you were at the time, at least you were weird and or, wanted or, to do your own shit. Or, or maybe weird isn't the right word, but you are willing to, to do things Take that risks. others aren't exactly what you, for what you thought was beautiful, what you thought was music and right. art. Ex exactly. And which I is think, really all that matters. Exactly. And I think that's just kind of the natural evolution of music and art and, and a lot of things, sports too. I mean, if you, if you look at things that soccer players do nowadays too, um, how right. the game has changed. I mean, it's really amazing yeah. for sure. I mean, any sports, the stats are just getting better and better. Like right. most sports, that records are always getting broken. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And humankind in general is getting better. That's that's the hope. That is definitely well, the hope. Physically, at least. Right. I don't know about well, ho hopefully some of us <laughs> mentally. Hopefully all of our untranslatable listeners out there are getting a little better right. mentally well, after yeah, each episode. I mean, we, we, we only attract the cream of the crop. Exactly. And which is why I want to leave you with this wonderful quote tonight, Jared. Um, and this quote is actually a traditional Czech quote. Um, I'm not going to say it to you in Czech tonight because I will probably not pronounce it right. But the English translation is, what's at home counts. Okay. It's like the home is where the heart is, essentially. I, I think so, yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to ask my mentor about that tomorrow. So to our listeners out there... Um, definitely keep your ears open for our next episode episode 19 um, i will um, try to um, discuss this quote a little bit more and get some more insight from a native speaker of czech um, so i have a quick question for you go for i was it. thinking this earlier uh what do you uh, uh, this you know this i'm just spitballing real quick just spitballing real quick mm -hmm. but what do you think of uh <laughs> untranslatable podcast translate this I don't know, just some sort of uh, <laughs> we, saying or something. We, we, we could use. do that. We, you know, we, we could, could spitball. It would work off of that. Start with that as a starting point. I was just thinking that, or, or another shirt idea. There you go. <laughs> Translate, Translate this. this. That's actually a really, really good idea. <laughs> that's that's. I actually really like that. See, I feel like it's growing on you now a little it bit. Is. At first, at first, <laughs> it took I mean, you a minute. You're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it, it, I was just gonna say, I I actually didn't really know what you were talking about. So. So that is pretty good. <laughs> I just like it as a catch, as a fun catchphrase, but I don't know when we'd use it. Like we just start, start every podcast with this is untranslatable podcast. Translate this. I, <laughs> I, I think uh, I think that would be great. Um, also to use on Twitter as a hashtag. Yeah. I like where your that head's would be at. a good one. So yes. Like so and at. for all of our listeners out there, please. Subscribe, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram at Untranslatable Podcast. Our Twitter handle is Untranslatable One. And please shoot us an email. Please correct our horrible pronunciations of these untranslatables. We're trying to spread um, some good language knowledge and culture um, to all of our listeners out there. And we want to make sure we're doing things right. So if you hear us say something wrong, please correct us. Um, Tweet us. Tell us what we did wrong. That's Hashtag right. Hashtag translate this. Exactly. So please check <laughs> us out. Thank you all so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Yeah.